What's up guys? Doc Ito here, the doctor is in. Today we're talking about this article, how to make a great anime adaptation. Very interesting article from the outline, has relevance to Olita and they do talk about Olita at the end. So definitely interesting and we'll get to it. First couple reminders. Number one, petition. We are at almost 13,000 signatures for an Alita Battle Angel sequel. Do your part, head over to vote and sign if you haven't already. Remember to vote on IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and Metacritic if you haven't to get the scores as high as we can for the movie, as well as request the movie on Netflix, which we argued is better for the movie than Disney+. Plus. Finally, yesterday we reported in depth on the question from Adam Tickets about what your favorite movie of 2019 is so far. We're up to 400 comments. We showed that out of the first couple hundred, they were pretty much all Alita, and we are doing great letting the media know and letting everybody know that Alita is our favorite movie of 2019. We are fighting for the sequel. We will not stand by in the presence of evil. We will fight. We will get this done. So let us take a look at this article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll read a fair amount of it. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, the outline has a nice long form here, and they argue that to make a great anime, you have to first get earnest, then expressionist, and finally corny. Like a villain intent on world domination, Western studios keep trying to make animes, but like the same plans of a supervillain, their adaptations fail again and again. The obvious flops, Dragon Ball Evolution, Ghost in the Shell, Death Note, and there are going to be more. Detective Pikachu, a live-action Pokemon film, Mark Webb is adapting Your Name, which is interesting, I didn't know, that might be good. Taika Waititi's version of Akira, perhaps the most iconic anime of all time, is finally going into production, produced by Leo DiCaprio. But the adaptations have been unsuccessful, not because there isn't an audience, but because they're bad. Why and how can we fix it? So here uh, they go into a long article talking about these things, which is uh, pretty interesting. Essentially, they argue that anime should not really be live action, that animation has a very distinct artistic tool at its disposal that you can't necessarily get in live action. They talk about how anime uses a grammar and tonal language that's similar to Western TV, but people don't fully understand it. So you might think you understand anime, but you don't. And then trying to converse in this language or make a movie in this language, you'll miss the point and lead to a bad adaptation. Here he argues, which is interesting, that people learn the language by watching anime while growing up. So I wonder if this is partially true and maybe that's why some people didn't like Alita. Maybe this is why the reviewers just didn't understand the language of anime or where anime is coming from and looking at it from a traditional Hollywood standpoint they couldn't understand how amazing this movie was. But I'm not fully convinced of this. I took family members to the movie who had no anime background at all and they absolutely loved Alita so I don't subscribe to this theory wholeheartedly, but there might be some truth to it. Then he goes on, likewise, anime relies on static images with voiceovers. Not for nothing, Dragon Ball Z is 95% scenes of characters powering up, standing in place, and yelling. I just, I thought that was funny. Um, so anyways, he keeps talking about the next uh, argument that an anime adaptation has to be essentially all in, into the universe that it's representing. So for instance, when you have something about a children's car game or teenagers learning to cook or ice skating, that is all that matters, all in into the universe. He continues, the important thing about these shows is not that the show wants you to think about how silly it is that everyone's obsessed with this card game. Quite the opposite. The show demands that you meet it where it is if you're going to expect to get anything out of it. Most Western adaptations of anime, by contrast, want you to know they're in on the joke and make repeated winking asides. It's literally irony poisoning. Now, then he goes on to argue that you have to have some transposition. You can't linearly transpose everything. So essentially, the adaptation has to change certain things. But these changes have to be within the construct and within the concept of the initial anime. So you can't completely change the tone or what the soul of the anime is. But it's fine to change certain things. And I think this is interesting for Alita. I mean, you know, the Berserker body... Um, in the movie found in the spaceship with Alita going underwater and then finding it versus in the manga where it's in Doc Ito's basement or Dr. Ito's basement, sorry. Um, I mean, these type of changes, while minimal in Alita itself, didn't change the whole concept of the manga, of the anime and what Alita is at all. And I think that is probably a good point. Really, the task of a successful anime is to grasp what it feels like to watch anime. 
then translate that feeling using the tools available, rather than simply putting boy band Goku on a big screen. That's why the best anime, according to this guy, is the Wachowskis Speed Racer. And then he talks about Speed Racer, talking about how everything in the movie screams racing, the animation style clashing, the countless split screens, talking heads, and everything. Um, there's actual controllers, and it even feels like Mario Kart with evil businessmen, trucks on with piranhas. None of this is happening because it's focus grouped or because it needs to hit an audience quadrant. It's because it's blinking awesome. Interesting thought about Speed Racer. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think Speed Racer is the best anime adaptation? Obviously not. That's Alita. But let's go to what he says about Alita itself. I'm skipping his uh, few paragraphs here about Speed Racer. But he goes, I know I'm using a lot of italics to describe Speed Racer. The whole movie takes place in italics. That's the point. It's also a reasonably accurate description of Robert Rodriguez's Alita Battle Angel, which is, if not a masterful version of what live-action manga or anime should look like, then at least a pretty good attempt. Well, Eric Thurm, I disagree. I think Alita is a fantastic, masterful version of exactly what live-action manga or anime should look like. There are lots of things to love about the movie. I'm fixing your word here. But Rodriguez and Cameron certainly went for it as hard as they possibly could. If you're looking for a metaphor to guide future Westerners attempting to adapt or work with the language of anime, you could do worse than Alita literally taking her heart out of her body to offer it to bewildered, unworthy boyfriend Hugo. The joy, wonder, and rich texture of anime is by now functionally a heart being offered to studios hungry for something new to adapt if they're willing to go all the way. And yes, that is exactly who Alita was. She is all in. She offers her heart. She fights for the innocent. She fights for what's right. She fights for her loved ones. And while this article, I disagree with the tone they take toward Alita, it's still overall fairly positive, and it brings up some interesting points. I mean, you know, they, they touch on various things about Ghost in the Shell and failing, and I do think it, it is important. And honestly, I think the more anime adaptations we get that are successful, probably the more likely an Alita sequel or more movies or perhaps a trilogy or series for Alita happens. Because if we can get these movies that are successful, we can prove to the studios that people are going to go out and watch these movies. What do you guys think about this article? Feel free to read the whole thing. Let me know in the comments what you think about what your favorite anime adaptation is outside of Alita, which is of course going to be number one. Are you guys looking forward to Detective Pikachu and Akira and all that? Continue to support Alita. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the free repairs. We're still waiting on a box office update. I don't think we'll get one for a couple days on the international box office, but the moment we do, we will let you know. So y'all have a great day. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Doc out.